the repression and the state harassment made it very difficult for people to express themselves politically. And, 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 and that led to armed struggle. You remove the association with um, repression from the state. You remove everything and uh, allow political parties to express themselves freely, uh, like we have right now in the uh, uh, post-apartheid dispensation. Then you've removed armed struggle. So armed struggle, while it was an important avenue and a site of struggle, um, was just a combination or an extension of the political struggle. Hello, my name is Donald and welcome to the number one media company, Worldview. At Worldview, we explore everyone's perspectives on all things that can broaden our worldview. Today, we have a very exciting guest with us, Jackie Soroke. Jackie was born in Alexandra Township in 1960, where he was part of the South African Students Movement and was heavily involved with the PAC. For his part in the struggle, Jackie was jailed in Robben Island and served there for a number of years before he was released on the 27th of April 1991. He is currently the editorial director at Scotterville Publishers and he is the author of the book Our Land, which I would definitely recommend to anyone. Jackie, I really hope I got all the pronunciations there right. Welcome so much for making the time to join us on Worldview. Thank you very much. You, you, you did well. Thank you. Thank you. Jackie, so I would ru- I'd really love to hear more of your background. Obviously, I read the book, but our viewers would love to hear more of your background. And perhaps when you explain your background, can you perhaps give us some information as to how you were perhaps mishandled or mistreated by the South African government? Because I know as uh, the, the, the apartheid government, because I know as a white South African, there is this sort of idea movement that apartheid wasn't as bad as people might like to think. But your story obviously accentuates it's much more complicated than that. So perhaps can you give us a background of your upbringing? Yes, I I just want to say this up front that uh, for, 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 for Black lives in, in South Africa, things were not as, um, as rosy as they appear to be. Uh, compared to other people elsewhere around the country. I know that uh, the authorities always said that uh, if you walk the streets, you'll, you'll find smiling faces of black people and that everything is honky-dory. The situation was slightly different and uh, because people are born into a vile system of oppression that that um, make them tend, that dehumanizes them. Um, and that, that really brings down their values. And, and also that the, the, the apartheid state was a, was a police state in, in large measure. It was um, a state more like what we were informed was happening behind the Iron Curtain. So suppression of um, views and opinions of people um, was the order of the day. Now this affected families because the laws clearly made it very difficult for families to, to, to be together. The, the influx control laws, the, um, the laws around education, the Group Areas Act, and all of that made it very difficult for normal life as we know it to continue. So you'll find that um, under, under those circumstances, it was very difficult to find an, um, a normal nuclear family, an extended family, because of the, the Bantu stand, the homeland system, and, and the general harassment. In, in, in Alexandra, where I was born and, and, and grew up, um, the, the, the community there had some semi-autonomous arrangement because property, uh, there, there were some property owners um, who, um, had bought some of the properties there. But even though people had property, they did not uh, have property rights. There was no security of tenure. And they could be removed as removals were taking place in the area of, uh, very, uh, on, a, on a regular basis. Now, 
for me in particular, I grew up under those circumstances. I grew up knowing that not only personally, but the, so the community we lived in, we knew that uh, things were, 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 were not um, very right. It's an urban area. So we had advantages of um, linking up with, for instance, um, with information, because I mean, there was a great censorship in South Africa. We, we, we linked up with information and stories would be told that uh, one would not would not get access to. I had a I had a penchant for getting things right. So as I as I grew up, I I I, I tried with my my team uh, in the Black Consciousness Movement, um, which which was not banned as such prior to 1977. So we, we, we tried to get information because the future was in our hands and we, we did not want to have a, 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 a future where we would be like our parents. So those seeds of resistance uh, came in early on and, and we tried as much as possible without necessarily romanticizing the struggle itself uh, to, to try and uplift ourselves through education. And in education, that is where the problems. Uh, this is where the problems were. My family, my family was influenced largely by um, the, the Protestant ethos. You know, the, the Christian ethos of. Um, uh, uh, and 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 it it encouraged us to be disciplined, to have real uh, values around our lives. And and we, we and this had been generations before. So we always contrasted what our lives should be, what we aspire for, and what we really, what we really are going through at, at that time. That's generally my, um, uh, my upbringing. And obviously it came in trenches. As I grew up, my consciousness raising programs became um, more, more uh, advanced. And now I, I became a, a spokesperson, if you like. Uh, and, uh, and, and and articulate to, to those who are semi-literate or illiterate and telling them about the conditions of black people. Fascinating. And, and Jackie, some would say, okay, perhaps obviously you know the best of all, but black consciousness, obviously it's pro-black, but some would say it's anti-white. Is that true? What what do you, What is your um, um, summary of black consciousness? Is it anti-white? No, no, no. The, um, it, it, it can never be. Uh, it, 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 it's not supposed to be like that. It's it's an affirmation of the um, human condition that uh, 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 black people found themselves in, because in the in the arrangement of the way the world works, we realize that uh, black people were uh, at the bottom of the pile. Um, and and in order to uplift ourselves from those conditions, we did not need uh, other people or others to, because it, it, it is an experience that we, we, we go through ourselves. So self-upliftment, liberating ourselves is, is the main thing. So black consciousness is actually a state of mind because we did not, we, we did not describe ourselves in the way other people have. But more than that, it's also a largeness, largeness of heart to, to try and improve relationships with others. Now, in, the, in this South African context, um, because of apartheid uh, and, and racial policies, when we say we are Black, uh, we have to define what we mean. And, 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 and by Black, we clearly said that this is a state of mind, and in a in a in a society we are working towards, it will not be necessary for us to be black or white or anything like that. It will be will be human beings um, and and interacting with each other um, the way that an ideal society should look like. So black consciousness is not is not racist at all. That's very interesting. So, sort of, if I'm interpreting your, um, if I'm finding your statements correctly, is that, in a certain sense, it's actually pro-white because if you're uplifting black people and you're uh, appropriating them to their right circumstances, that will only help white people 
in comparison. It's it helps everyone black consciousness, not just black people. Yes, um, uh, actually, the, the one of the responsibilities of black of of, of black consciousness or Pan Africanism is to to educate white people about racial prejudices um, uh, and 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 Arab negative patterns about other people. So um, the fullness of the philosophy really uh, I agree is to, to try and put everybody on, a, on an equal footing, including liberating whites. Jackie, and uh, through of this movement, how did you get involved in the struggle? The struggle, I mean, I know, for example, you ended up being an underground courier. How did this happen? I, um, you know, the June 16 uprisings, uh, I think the, that generation that was involved in the June 16 uprisings uh, made a, a, a very significant turnaround on, on the way in which we, we carry our lives. We had aspirations and we felt we must take our future into our own hands. I was um, a leader during the June 16 um, uh, period and, and, and did not go to exile. Like many people were going out into exile. I did not go out into exile. So I faced, I was at the cold face of confrontation with um, uh, apartheid authority. And um, the, the authorities were, like I said earlier, using extreme methods to cow down people, uh, to, to, to bring them on their knees. And they tried to apply that on me. And I seriously looked at it and said, no, it means the struggle must now go to a, 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 a higher level other than just us as students uh, uh, struggling. There was also, um, obviously the, the PAC and, and, and the ANC and other political organizations were banned and were proscribed. Um, but they they had a message and a, 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 that the authority that the apartheid authorities did not like. So I, I I looked at that and I felt among my peers, let's choose where we are going, which which organizations would we be um, comfortable with, and we made a study group, um, and eventually uh, studied what was banned at the time, but we studied the, the policies of these organizations. And, and we started with the ANC. At, at, at that stage, the, the ANC policy is, is, is the, the Freedom Charter. So I, I distributed the Freedom Charter for, for these discussions. Um, but at that stage, I had already concluded that uh, the, the best way to go was, was with the, with the Pan-Africanist Congress of Azania. Jackie, just for our audience, for our viewers, they've probably been um, overwhelmed with the history of the ANC, the African National Congress. What was the PAC and what did it uh, stand for? Um, look, the, 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 the PAC's philosophy is African nationalism. Um, and you'll know that uh, Pan-Africanism on the African continent was was uh, the driving force behind all the independent states that were coming in. So so the PAC took a position before it was banned that it did not um, want to create conditions in Africa as a whole that were a copycat of the West or the East during that period. Uh, but it will borrow and take what's best from the West and from the East, but it will have its own image. For instance, it spoke about the African personality, how Africa should carry itself uh, and, and the African, the new citizen, the new African person must be able to have higher values and so on. And we, the, the PAC also had um, uh, engaged with, with, with the concept of communism, for instance, and felt that communism, Unlike um, uh, anything else, it also had a, a, a tendency to impose itself on communities, on, on, on people's lives, um, uh, without necessarily dealing with the reality. But Sobukwe, who led the, P, the PAC, was saying that uh, 
uh, communism and, and Christianity had the wrong representatives in, in our region of the world. So, so we, we, we looked at all these things and said, but there should be a way that, that, that accommodates us. So, so that's, how, that's how the PAC looked at it. And, and I think, I think the, contrasting the, the PAC with, um, with the African National Congress, where from, where, from whence they come, um, the, the, the African National Congress worked very closely with the Soviet Union, for instance. Um, so, so, so this makes a difference. And in that sense, would you describe the PAC as more centrist or centered to right than the ANC because um, they didn't have the influence of the Communist Party? Or do you think that's almost irrelevant? It's just because they had the backing of the Communist Party, or excuse me, not the Communist Party, the, the, the Soviet Union, that they really got the influence that they, at the end of the day, had the ANC. Yeah, well, well, I mean, this, this whole concept of left and right and, and centrist really is the stuff that analysts should, should make because it, it, it's also a moving target, you know, from, from one, one, one era to another. Uh, some organizations have moved, uh, as, as, as you, 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 you'd realize in history that some have gone for mixed economies and the Soviet Union has collapsed. But some of those organizations are still are, are still available, so it's it's a moving thing. For the PAC, we also have moved with those with those. We have, at some stage, the PAC was considered left. Uh, some had considered it uh, right, um, and and because we participate in the, the current South African um, uh, uh, constitutional democracy, we are also considered centrist. So, so so it's a moving target. I cannot honestly say. Um, how 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 that should be considered for particularly the police. Um, Jackie, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the PAC and the ANC were two of the organizations in South Africa that engaged in the armed struggle. They believed nonviolence wasn't the only method we had to go towards a more violent or a armed struggle. Do you think at the end of the day that was necessary? But because a person like Prince Mongosuti Butelezi would argue from the IFP that an armed struggle wasn't necessary. That was not the way to go. What, what is your opinion of the, of the success of an armed struggle? I, well, I think that um, the, 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 the armed struggle in South Africa was um, did not really reach, we, we did not have a full flesh war. It was a political struggle rather than an armed struggle. So, so armed struggle was another side of, of, of this political struggle because the, the repression and the state harassment made it very difficult for people to express themselves politically. And, 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 and that led to armed struggle. You remove the association with um, repression from the state. You remove everything and uh, allow political parties to express themselves freely. Uh, like we have right now in the uh, uh, post-apartheid dispensation, then you've removed armed struggle. So armed struggle, while it was an important avenue and a site of struggle, um, was just a combination or an extension of the political struggle. And, and why do you think, for example, they ban an organization like the PAC and the ANC and not in Qatar? Well, Linkata came in uh, a little later, and and it it it, it worked with um, it it worked within the system. Uh, it was not an, an an outright opposition to 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 the apartheid system. They they ran a a Pantustan, uh, and and they they also had traditional. Um, they looked at the traditional, the cultural traditional elements of society. That they had to preserve because that's, that's where they came, they came from, uh, in 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 Kwazu. So there, there are circumstances, and and the circumstances of the PAC and others are, are, are quite different. But you will know that. I mean, we 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 need to understand that South Africa is is um, having its own um, various schools of thought uh, within it, and and. Uh, 
exchanges with the IFP, for instance, or with Mangosutu Butelezi, have always taken place between him and the PAC and PAC leaders, uh, uh, simply because it's important to accommodate uh, other people. The PAC not only talked to um, the, the IFP leader, it also talked to a group of um, Africaners who were championing African nationalism uh, of their own. So, so this dialogue, um, a national dialogue among political parties has always been seen as very important so that we, we, we have coherence and can build a new nation. Do you think Inkata played a, um, a vital role in transition towards a more democratic South Africa? Do you think it would have happened without Inkata and Prince Mangosuthi Budalesi? Well, I think that um, especially during the, 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 the period of the of negotiations, um, they, they 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 played a significant role uh, that cannot be wished away, because they 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 were advocating for a federalist uh, uh, South Africa, um, and 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 they they actually looked at KwaZulu Natal as 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 a as a basic area uh, that would in a in an asymmetric way, we considered as part of the, the country compared to others that are much weaker. They have the numbers. Uh, the population in KwaZulu Natal is very high compared to other provinces right now. So the, uh, the IFP was also included at the last moment. You know, when we had the first election, uh, they had to paste the IFP on the ballot box because they, they decided to participate in the in the elections the night before, you know, through mediation and so on. So the, the IFP cannot be taken as a, an, an organization that is not important. It was and has always been um, a key player, as it would be, because it is associated with the, 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 the kingdom in KwaZulu Natal. It has a history, Shaka Dingani, and so on. So it's, it's, a, it's a very important um, a player, significant player in, in South Africa's uh, uh, political affairs. Jackie, do you think the ANC upstaged the PAC? That really it was the PAC that um, really led the struggle at least until 1980 and through the influence of perhaps Russia, the ANC um, managed to get much more influence than they really deserved. And a lot more credit, if, at least throughout the history, is should be um, credited towards the PAC and ending apartheid because we don't even well, we don't we don't uh, read anything about the PAC almost in history um, at least the young people in, in high school so do you think we, more credit should be due to the PAC and ending apartheid I think it would be fair to to to, to deal with the history of South Africa um, in an objective manner um, but the, 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 the African National Congress has always had um, supporters who misunderstood what the PAC stands for. I mean, they, they always thought that the PAC was going to uh, isolate white people, drive them to the sea, and all this propaganda that was made against, against the PAC. And that, that, that propaganda worked for them. But I also think that they, 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 they up, upgraded their strategies and tactics, um, particularly in the 80s that you're talking about, where they had a, a, a strong front inside the country that was called the United Democratic Front. And that, that movement uh, managed to talk to new generations of people and left the PAC behind while the PAC was not... Um, uh, uh, was was carrying the hot end of the stick by being sent to prison, its leaders um, uh, being poisoned, and 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 the, the PAC having serious problems um, in the international community. Some some countries, uh, particularly Soviet associated uh, uh, countries, isolated the PAC completely. So so. So, so, so that had an effect on the PAC. But with, in terms of history, I mean, the, the PAC history is known. I mean, we, we, 
turn things around with the um, um, highlighting how apartheid works during the what is now called the Human Rights Day, the Shabville Day, when we are showing how how the past past laws were affecting local people. So the PAC played a role also at the United Nations by raising the issue of um, South Africa and, and isolating South Africa from, from, the U, from the UN. And South Africa was, by the way, John Smart, General John Smart was part of the original founders uh, of, of the United Nations. And so the PAC worked very hard in 1972 to, to, to get South Africa not to have a, a, a a position there and the PAC became an observer at the United Nations. The same thing happens in, in, in Africa, the, the boycott and so on. So those struggles made by the PAC. Obviously the ANC as a fraternal organization also uh, uh, benefited from that. But at the, um, to, uh, the pen penultimate point of victory, uh, the, I would say the PAC was, was, was tripped and did not make it um, uh, 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 there. But because we, we hold such a, 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 a powerful history, a rich history, heritage, and we have an appeal to younger people, the FISMA, all generations um, uh, refer to the PAC. We have an association with the Black Consciousness Movement. There's a, there's a great possibility of the PAC coming up and being very, a very strong player in, in modern day South Africa. Jackie, um, in your book, you detail how you ended up on Robben Island. Can you perhaps explain to our viewers your journey towards why you were arrested and what was your experience like in Robben Island? Oh, okay. Look, I was, I was already in the underground movement of the PAC. We, 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 we operated um, inside the, 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 the country and um, largely doing political work for, for the PAC. Um, I was arrested um, in the... Western Transvaal of the time, um, in the company of um, guerrilla lead leaders of the Azanian People's Liberation Army at the roadblock, um, and eventually went through trial and sentenced to 12 years on Robben Island. Um, on the island, look, Robben Island had about, I, I, I remember that when I was in the leadership of the community of Robben Island, we, we had about 250 uh, prisoners there. Uh, the, the political prisoners have a tendency uh, to, to, to regenerate themselves um, for, to continue their work. So if you put them into prison, we, we turn Robben Island into a, a university of politics, if you like. But it had a wide range of characters uh, on, uh, on, on the island over generations. Just as a matter of statistics, I mean, there's, a, there's almost 6,000 people who have been on Robben Island since 1960 up to 1991. And, and out of all those, um, most, of, most of them um, have studied in prison, they are prison graduates. Um, including myself, I, I, I made formal studies there too. But you, 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 you tend to understand life broadly and become more national and not narrow based on your, your geographic uh, location, where you come from. You meet people from different areas, uh, from KwaZulu Natal, from the Eastern Cape, from the Northern Transvaal, from almost everywhere. And then you, you, you create, uh, have a better understanding of what sort of nation we, we and almost every day you are there there's a discussion on political issues on everything from the ozone layer to um, um, to changes with global warming to almost everything that affects human condition so in a strange way you would say obviously no one would advocate that people will be sent to a prison in robin island but in a strange way it prepared you for the future um, with your discussions there to a certain degree, it helped you prepare for the future. Yes. Um, um, uh, look, it, it depends on an individual, but you benefit a lot when you come across people who have, at the time South Africa was isolated, but people who would tell you about the Olympics, who have seen the Olympics and the value of uh, this, this sport. And we, we discussed a lot of things. My own interest, we discussed literature. We, we discussed, most of the leaders liked reading 
autobiographies and biographies of leaders throughout the world. I mean, it's no wonder that uh, you had a statement like, like, like Nelson Mandela, because this, these were the issues that people were, we would discuss and we would, and remember that when people write their, their, their autobiographies, especially leaders from, from, from all perspectives uh, in the Western world, in Africa, uh, but mostly in the Western world, we would learn to understand um, that decision making uh, is not is not as easy as that. Um, you have to make decisions based on things that would benefit uh, the greater part of society than to benefit the few or to benefit yourself, and and learn from mistakes of others. So 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 those conversations, uh, appreciation of literature, just to 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 be able to love words and so on. We had a writer's club on Robben Island, for instance, and we would discuss everything from um, the benefits and, 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 and the joy of literature, of creative writing and so on. Um, so, so, so you become, well, for Robben Island, it's a, it's, a, it's a piece of history. I don't think it will be repeated, it should, should never be. It's a piece of history that allows people to come out far better than when they, go, when they went in. That's a fascinating. And uh, Jackie, um, when you were released, what was that like? To all of the sudden, was it was it spontaneous? Um, did you know you were going to be released? And what was that feeling like? All of a sudden, stepping out of that prison or um, going on that ship, uh, leaving that island. Look, the the that period in 1990, the, the, the PSU and then the ANC were already unbanned. But one of the critical um, steps towards negotiations was to release politi political prisoners. And they, the authorities just decided to release in, 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 in groups, in small groups, uh, depending on the condition of a particular prisoner. But when we were released, um, I remember that it was a, it was a Friday uh, on the 27th, April, 1991. But on the, on the, on the 25th, the authorities came very late at night in our cell to say, hey, you're, you're going to be released. We didn't expect it. Yeah. We didn't expect it. And some people who were expecting to, to be released were, 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 were shocked at the fact that um, um, people like ourselves in the PC, because we had not signed any agreement. We did not agree with the amnesty and, and, and things like that. We're going to be released purely on merit because, I mean, the... the um, they, they had to look at you as a political prisoner and release you on that on that on that basis. So it was it was really fascinating. I tell you, it's like going prison is not so good because then you don't have children there, you don't have women, you don't have um, normal life as we know it, and then you you, you get your what am I getting into now? Going back, how how is it going to be? So it it, it was at the same time exciting. Even funny because we joke about it um, uh, with others. Um, scary in some instances because there were there, uh, uh, there were, there were um, activities, the killings in South Africa at the time. So so those activities created a lot of fear, foreboding, and so on. So 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 I, I really looked up to it. The other thing is I had had a a child born when I was um, still in detention. Um, she was now uh, a grown girl, and she. she was, uh, uh, my view was now I'm, I was going to be able to meet with her uh, and talk to her. So personally, very challenging. And of course, freedom is freedom. You're, you're outside the factors of someone looking you in and out every day. So it was uh, it was a happy event. <laughs> That's so interesting. So sort of what you're describing is obviously nobody wants to be in a prison, but perhaps after all those years you've become accustomed to it. And now all of a sudden, uh, it's, you have that trepidation of, okay, now I'm going out to the outside world again. Now I've, I have to get used to something new again. Um, I've gotten used to prison. Now I've got to get used to living that free life again. Yeah, and the, 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 the problem would largely be that when you get out of prison, you don't, um, you don't remember the names of people that you you should know, you know, because you're, you're, you've been confined. You know the face, 
but cannot place it. And some of and, and, and this sometimes appears to be rude, but um, that's that's what you go through. Oh, I'm sorry, there's noise here, but and I can, I cannot move. No problem, no problem. Jackie, um, and I believe you can correct me if I'm wrong, you were part of the Codesa negotiations uh, when you were released from prison. Perhaps, can you perhaps describe to your audience what was that like, being part of those negotiations? Um, when I left, when I went out, out of prison, many people now knew who, who I was. And and negotiations were taking place. I I did not want to be involved in in politics because I I had told myself earlier on that my my role would be to fight apartheid. And once apartheid is gone, I would have a a, a new role in my life. And I thought that coming out of prison with with with, with that um, with that approach um, would help me go quietly into into society without without difficulties, but then um, uh, the PAC uh, put pressure and and asked me to be part of its its leadership, um, and and be part of the negotiations. So I I, I became part of the Cordesa negotiations, and went back into politics. But I always was saying, no, I'm primarily. I, I, I love the arts and I want to focus on writing. So maybe I should, I should, I should allow that period to go on. After 1994, I, I went back again to my uh, wishes for writing, to, to, to focus on my family, to do that. So I have, um, I have a lot of stories, poetry and so on that still needs to see the light of the day in terms of publishing. But, but do you think that Kodesa uh, negotiations that you were part of um, that you see it as beneficial, that you see it as beneficial towards the PIC. Do you think the right decisions were made during the, the CODESA? No, I think the CODESA um, negotiations were uh, a flawed. In retrospect, when I look at it, I think that um, uh, the story of CODESA must be told in detail. The, whilst you had many parties negotiating, the, 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 the negotiations were done uh, behind those doors um, between the ANC and the, and, and the National Party. Uh, they went on post barats and, and they, all, they came with faint accomplices when, uh, uh, at a negotiating table. That's bad. Um, and and uh, some of the issues that are critical, uh, they, would, they would just rebuff. But for, for the PAC, I think we played a, a significant role. For instance, we were saying that for, for, for the transition to be credible, you needed a transitional executive authority, not, not, not go to elections under the terms and conditions laid down by the national party. We achieved that, uh, the country achieved that. And that's a contribution that the PAC uh, uh, emphasized on. Um, I also think that um, other, other issues that could create tension in, in Southern Africa were, 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 were dealt with, uh, particularly um, the, the small, the island of Alphys Bay in Namibia. Um, we, so South Africa laid claim to it and said it was part of South Africa. And we said, no, in the new constitution, that, that goes to Namibia. Let them create their own economy. You know, Alphys Bay um, uh, has its own economic benefits. Um, and, 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 and we felt those, those benefits should go to, 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 to Namibia so that as an independent country, they can be able to see where they go. So there were many other issues that the PC uh, 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 contributed, which are of a positive nature that I think we should be proud of. Fascinating. And Jackie, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you were and senior leaders of the PAC were arrested when Chris Harney was murdered. What was, can you, can you tell us that story? Yes. Um, look, the the, 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 the PUC was was taken as as correct by the population um, of South Africa, especially when 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 Chris Dani was murdered. Uh, the, the 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 view was that I mean, there was, 
you know you could slice tension with the with, with the knife in the air you know it was it's tension was so strong and uh, and polarization came about as a result of that killing and most people look up to the PAC, but we were uh, uh, some some members of the PAC, including myself, were targeted by the uh, security police. So the PAC, um, Chris Ani died on the 10th of April, but on the 25th of May, the PAC structures, all of them, including myself, were um, were kept in detention. The leaders were kept in detention, and I think they were preparing a treason trial. Um, but because the pressure was so 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 deep, we had strategically in the PAC, we had participated in the in in, in the Cordessa talks. And I was one of the, the delegates of the PAC at the Cordessa talks. So that helped us because we had a strategy that balanced. We were not just causing havoc and, and being involved in, 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 in violence. We were involved in, in 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 real building of a peaceful society. So, so, so the the the, the issue of uh, a treason trial could not work. So they they uh, they released every individual from there with pressure that was um, uh, put up by by participants at Cordes. Do you think they were looking for a scapegoat? Because obviously, Chris Arnie's murder is a very serious matter, and they needed someone to blame it on. And Conveniently, it would be a, it would be a black organization, not a white organization, for the national party. Well, the the the, the, the first announcement, if you go back to those uh, uh, to the incident itself on the day of Hani's uh, 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 killing, they they said it was the PAC that had, uh, and, and 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 the announcement was probably made by people behind behind this um, to to. To, to deflect the issue away from, from them. So it was a, like a black on black uh, killing. Um, but because we had, we, we had criticized some issues that Chris Hani was, was coming up with and, and, and openly uh, disagreed with him in some areas. But to, to not, not, not that we could go on, on to measures of violence against black people. That would be against the ideals of, black, of the PAC at the time. So, um, uh, this association of the killing of Hani with the PAC was also made a, a, a big issue. I agree with your, your analysis or the way you, you, you seem to approach the, the matter. But it, it had no substance. It could not be proven in any way. So it was just an, an issue. As, as you know, the culprits were, were found and arrested. Jackie, your book has a very prov provocative title, some would say, Our Land. Why did you decide on this title, Our Land, for the for the name of the title of your book? Uh, two 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 items. The first is that when I was uh, operating in the underground of the PAC, um, I used the name Zuele. It's it's a it's a it's a common name in the in the in the Kosa dialect, um, and. Uh, uh, so that I didn't use my real name. It was a nom de guerre. Um, and I felt that uh, if I write a book, people must know who, who was coming across them because now some people have, would have forgotten who I was uh, during that period. But the, the translation of that name is our land. Um, I also think that this is the second point I'm raising. I also think that uh, the, the critical issue um, uh, with, with South Africa, even today, is a national question. We have not composed the nation very well. And, and who composes the nation? The people themselves. How do we identify with each other as a united, cohesive nation? There are, there are, there are issues that create divisions among people. Polarization, on, 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 it, it, it comes up from time to time. But once we, we, uh, resolve the issue of our nationhood, we would not have this division, we would not have this problem. And, and from a PAC point of view, we would, we would prefer that people are not um, uh, accommodated on the basis of their ethnic, ethnicity, their, their, their tribe, their race, and so on. And we, we, we only look at citizens as, as individuals. In that way, 
uh, the, the, there's no favor, but uh, um, a nation um, exists on a, on a geographic space, on, 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 on the land. Um, the land issues, land reform has not been very effective in South Africa. Um, and and we are we're still continuing with that, with that debate. And I was, I was raising the issue because it's a historical thing. People knew that they are fighting for the land, but today they are squashed in, in slums, in, in, in areas that are highly overcrowded. Um, and, and, and these issues, the policies that deal with these issues are, are inadequate. That they're actually not so good. I make a, I make an example. It's very difficult for people to deal with um, uh, claiming their land, their historical land, because they must produce evidence. But people have never really had um, land um, the title deeds and and, and 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 things like that. They were removed without being consulted on some of the issues. And it's also the it, it, it's compounded by the fact that. Some of the land is in, in the Bantu stands, the 13% Bantu stands throughout the country, which are also difficult because those Bantu stands, you, you don't, you, you, can, you can build a house or have a farm there, but it's, the, the land is not yours. It belongs to the trust led by a, a traditional leader. So it, it, it gets so complicated. People do not have land. And, and when they come to, to, that's why people rush from, um, the periphery to the center, and the center is the urban areas. There's so much overcrowding. This leads to crime. This leads to, I mean, the, the development strategies are, in our view, not so good. And what would you see as a solution to this problem? The, the EFF would propose the, the nationalization of the land. Would you be in favor of that? Well, we think first, let's, let's discuss the land directly. Let's discuss what, what the problems are and, and deal with the fears of others. And, um, uh, and, and, and come with a, a common solution. We, we have a proposal, but it's not the same as, as that of the, uh, of the EFF. And our proposal is, is, is largely that um, uh, on the basis of, um, I mean, there, there's, there's, there is land that lies fallow. That's not utilized uh, at all. And it would, be, it would be good to allocate that land, whether it is, uh, outside the urban areas, or because that's 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 where the, the, the land is, and allocate people uh, land that they, they they know, and they must have title deeds. Because with the land, you can either take loans and so on. So the, the financial financialization system is such that the the, the current land uh, is owned by the banks. So we 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 have to have that conversation with the financial institutions. Uh, to resolve the matter and see how uh, they would be compensated, and 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 you don't necessarily have to go I mean, in, in some areas. Of course, you can nationalize, but in and in other areas, you, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to. I mean, how do you nationalize land, for instance, in the urban areas? Um, because I mean, most people they have the land for residential purposes, some for industrial purposes. And uh, so, 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 so we, we look at this on, on, on merit, but come with a definite proposal to say that we agree yeah, the contestation on the issue of land is, is also historical. You know, the empty land theory that we've been uh, told that um, um, in Southern Africa, um, uh, the, the, the colonialists and, 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 and African people came here onto, onto an empty land. No, we don't. It's not true. I mean, there are um, uh, there are issues that we must deal with of a historical perspective uh, in order to come to some agreement. We don't necessarily have to fight each other or pull each other this way and that way. We understand the history of, of, of South Africa very well. I mean, Europeans had religious wars and, and, and they got rid of people on the basis of that. Um, so, so they came here and they are part, they're Africans, basically. But they cannot be Africans, because Africans, there are also people who come from, from the East, uh, who came here, uh, 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 like the Indians on indentured labor. We accept them. We're, we're not um, uh, xenophobic. Uh, they're, they're historically people from here. But we have to make a, a, a clear accommodation of the history of the country very well, and not one, because I mean, right now it's lopsided, that the minority, have all the riches while the majority are 
uh, not in so good conditions. It seems like your position is sort of a blend between Herman Mashaba's action essay and the ANC. This, um, it, it seems like a blend between the two where land should be taken where um, illegally occupied or where it is clearly necessary. They've been vacated for a long period. Well, yeah. Well, I would. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that because that's that's true. Um, uh, look, every, all of us, all citizens, want to know that the, the security of Kenya. I don't want to have uh, property, and tomorrow it has become a slum because it, it, because of overcrowding and and, and 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 things like that. Those those difficulties, those problems of uh, property rights, must be must be implemented very well by the state. Um, but we should also look take care of our citizens. Our citizens must find a home um, that they feel uh, they can bequeath to other generations uh, as, as we move forward. That security of tenure is very important. Um, and it's also important to, make, to, to, to correct uh, the wrongs of the past, um, to, to, to deal with each other on, on, on the basis of um, equality with, 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 with one another. I mean, this story I'm telling you, the, the narrative of suffering, being detained and so on. I am willing to say that um, we, we, we are prepared to forgive and, and, and go through it because it was under different circumstances. But in a new society, that cannot go on. I want to tell you a story. You know, I write in the book about Velum Gautier. Um, he, we called, they, they called him devil eyes because he, he he was really um, one of those characters uh, that you, you'd feel pity for. I mean, he, he, he derived pleasure from the pain of others, you know? But it's not right. Well, he's still alive, you know? And, and he's, 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 um, he's an, they're actually charging him to explain the disappearance of a woman cadre of the ANC who has not been accounted to up to this day. And I look at him and say, he can't possibly be normal after going through all, 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 all those. So how many people has he tortured? And he was, he was uh, sadist, you know, he was a, a very bad person. But I'm, I'm saying we, we should be able to accommodate people like that. And he, it, 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 he must be man enough or, or well, let me not be, let me be gender uh, sensitive, but I'm saying he should be, um, able to say, look, I, I, I've done very well, forgive me. And, and the system should forgive him, but he must tell the truth. It's as simple as that. That's Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jackie. This has been, I, I see we're running out of time. I, I really want to thank you for the discussion. This was absolutely amazing. And really, I would recommend anyone to buy a book and learn more about, or just share the story because it's such a, a fascinating tale. Jackie, I want to give you one last opportunity if you want to add anything or to just answer a question that you'd hope I'd ask you. Uh, one last message for our viewers, for our audience. Now, I, I, I've used in the book, I've used um, all the literary devices. I mean, I've used flashbacks. I've, I've used the story from a human being. I'm telling the story of, I'm, I'm not, I'm not breast beating in, 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 in my memoirs. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this using um, the, the, my, the craft of writing to make the story more entertaining, to make it more human. And I hope, I hope I've achieved that. Uh, in the book. Uh, you absolutely did. And thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much for making the time to join us on Worldview. To our viewers, you definitely enjoyed this conversation. So show your appreciation. Share this video as widely as possible. Like this video and sh subscribe to our channel for more such content. My name is Donald, and you've been watching Worldview. Mm -hmm.